Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Brandon, just trying to give you guys another comic book review, so here we go. Batman Urban Legends, number four. Oh boy. Was pretty good. So far. Yeah. Actually... The Batman, Red Hood, and uh, Batwing, and Grifter stories were great. The Tim Drake one, eh, not so much. <laughs> not so much. I didn't really like the plot. I'll just say that. I didn't like the plot. The plot could have gone somewhere else, but nope, it had to go ahead. And, uh, oh god... Yeah, I don't like the plot, because it panders to the LGBT community, and uh, this is just going to be one tight knot, knot to unravel, and I don't want to go, I don't want to get into it, so, uh, other than that, this was a good book, and I would give this an 8 out of 10. American Vampire, number 1976, book nine, was great, fan-fucking-tastic, 10 out of 10, Mr. Miracle, the source of freedom, was a badass book, I loved it! This is an awesome book. I loved it so much. It was a great book. And, oh, it's a lot better than Tom King's Mr. Miracle. Thanks, Tom King. I can't believe you made Mr. Miracle, the original one, suffer from depression. Uh -huh. But this is way better. This is like 10 times better. 10 times better. And uh, I will give this a, a 10 out of 10 because this is like 10 times better. You guys should be reading this. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go through some, through some back issues here. Green Lantern Corps number 27 was Finn... Fucking tastic. It was just a filler arc, and I fucking love it. 10 out of 10. Tachyon, number one. Yes, I, I, I wanted to read this. Because it's awesome. And I don't like reading newer comic books nowadays. Uh, because of my own personal political opinions. That don't agree with comic books nowadays. I still like reading newer ones, but they're just not as fun as the older ones. You know, they're, they're not as fun. You know, they they kind of suck the life out of all the all the comic book fans that are reading nowadays. You know, it just it kind of sucks the life, but this comic book was awesome. And I'm not joking, like it was a good comic book. It was a good read. I want to know more about this character. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Bob, the galactic bum. Number one out of four. And yes, it has the main man. Oozing testosterone 9000. Oh yeah. How should I get, how should I say this? This is the best comic book of the late 90s. 
<laughs> Why? Because it doesn't have to do with anything with continuity. You could just wipe it all away and it still works. 10 out of 10. Rebels, 94, issue number zero. Oh, yes! Oh, God. Yes. Oh, my God. This is an awesome comic book. Oh, my God. They're packing lots of heat. And I freaking love it. This is what comic books should be nowadays. But no. They're all sensitive. And this is not sensitive. This is just fucking awesome. 10 out of 10. And when I meant, you know, sensitive, I meant uh, comic books. Nowadays, compared to, well, 1990s comics. Damage, number zero. Yes. Oh, God, yes. I freaking love it. I'm being straight up honest. I freaking love it. I wish DC could do more with this character. Oh, wait. No, they can't because they killed him off in 2009. Thanks, DC! Yeah, with the event called Blackest Night. Yeah, thanks, DC! <laughs> but, all in all, it was a good book. I really want to know more about this character. 10 out of 10. Xeno Brood, number one, I mean, sorry, it's number zero. And oh my god, are her legs short? I mean, seriously, look at it! Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! That is not how you draw legs! Oh my god! No, that's not how you draw legs! I mean, I would be fine with. With, you know, with these kind of legs here. Because they look kind of eh, abnormally proportionate, but, you know. But that's... Oh my god, what the hell happened to her lower lower half of her legs? What did they do? Did they shrink in the dryer or something? Alright, alright. All jokes aside, this was a good book. No, I'm not even joking. It was a good book. 10 out of 10. Hawkman. Number... F no, sorry. Number 23. Hey. Was freaking awesome. Ten out of ten. Hawkman number zero. For those of you who do not know, this is the fusion of two Carter Halls, Carter Hall and Katar Hall. Well, they're one of okay, okay, okay. Confusion. Yes, one of them is a human with wings. One of them is a Thanagarian, an alien with wings. Okay, get that? Okay, good. Now, mix it up with Shaira Hall, or in this case, Hawk Girl, and a Hawk Beast. And what do you get? Well, you get the fusion dance of those four to become one. And that's the one. And I love this book so much. I really do. Not even joking. 10 out of 10. Zero hour, a crisis in time. Oh my god! Oh, sorry. Uh, how 
how should I say this? It's okay. It's a really good comic book that is now in canon. In continuity. And I love this book so much. Ten out of ten. Chain Game War! Oh yeah, number eleven. Yes, this is awesome. This is awesome. I mean, look at it. Batman. Freaking Nightfall Batman right there. That's Azrael, or, yeah, John Paul Valley, before he became all psycho and crazy. <sighs> all in all, I give this comic book a 10 out of 10. The story, the layouts, the plot, the artwork, the shadowing, everything you would see in this comic book was very, very good. 10 out of 10. Anima, number one. Oh my god, I fucking love this. I swear to god, this is a good book. I'm not joking. This is a good book. And I swear... That if DC wanted to do this again, I think that they have a really good chance with this character. I really want to see her in a book, DC. Do you hear me? Because I'm your comic book fan. I'm one of them. And I would love to see her interact with, this, with the 21st century, you know... In the 21st century. I want to see Courtney Mason. A.K.A. Anima. I really want to see more of her. Really bad. You Do you hear that DC? You should be doing more of that. You shouldn't be having. 13 god awful books of Batman. You should be having two. Detective Comics and Batman. That's it. The other 11 comic books can go to D or sorry, C to D list characters. You should be doing this, DC. You should be doing this, not focusing on money. You should be focusing on writing good comic books. Having good artists that, you know, that do this type of work. And you should be having really good characters. You're starting to do it now with the JSA. I really want to see more of that. I really do. I really want to see more of that. I want to see Courtney Mason, Anima. I want to see, uh, I don't know, uh, Princess Amethyst of Gemworld. I want, well, no, actually that already happened. <laughs> Um, I want to see Tachyon. There. There we go. I, did, I said it. I want to see those two characters in a comic book. Right now. Right now, DC. Because I can say this. This comic was fucking awesome. 10 out of 10. Awesome. And I'm a 90s kid. And this was awesome. Oh, God. I love this book so much. I really do. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's Lobo. Oh, my God. What to say about this book 
Um, it was fucking awesome. And that's it. Like, oh my god. This was good. This was a good book. Oh my god. Yes. I want to see more of Lobo. Please. 10 out of 10. Ah, all right. And I got some All-Star Squadron books right here. I want to... This is the other one I was looking forward for. The All-Star Squadron. This is what I need for DC to do again. Is to make an All-Star Squadron book. Because here's the thing. I'm only asking them to do those three titles because I believe those three titles could work in the 21st century with social media and, you know, with everything that's happened between the 80s, the 90s, and now. This is what needs to happen. This is what gets your fan base going there, DC. You're starting off in a really good direction, and I think that this will continue to do very well in a good direction. <sighs> now with that rant out of the way, here's a here's a All Star Squadron number fifty six. I love this book. I really do. Because it has the seven soldiers of victory. And I loved everything in this comic book. All in all, it was a good book. 10 out of 10. All-Star Squadron, number 42. I love this book. The story, the plot, everything. Fucking awesome. 10 out of 10. Read it. Ah, I love this book. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to probably have to censor the next comic book in my pile because I don't want to be offending people, but not this co not this cover. No, not this one. This one was great. This is awesome. This is awesome. Right here. Fucking love it. But it's this comic book. Uh, it's this comic book. Oh, God. Just no. Why? Because Amazing Man has to fight an evil oppressor. God, I have to use that word. And I really don't like using the word oppressor. By the name of All-American. And he's a white dude. You can sink that in for a little bit. Because it's nuts. All in all, I mean... For, for the time, being in the 80s, this was in the 80s. Trust me, I was not alive then. I was not alive, nor was I conceived... But I can respect the topics and issues during that time period. Because if I look in something from the past, it gives me greater knowledge as to what not to do for the future. 
or or what not to say. And I don't like using social media for doing that anyways. Because there's good literature that do those types of stuff. All in all, it was a good book. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. All-Star Squadron, number 19. Oh, how should I say this? It was a great twist. And I mean, really, it was a really great twist. It had good, good expectations for me as a comic book reader. It had really good twists. It had really good plot. It, it just... Now, all in all, and it also had good art, so, you know, very good art. All in all, it was a 10 out of 10. And that will be it for me, folks, for today. Please tune in next time for my next video that I will be doing on this channel.